Welcome everyone, my name is Jared Eaton from the Department for Environment and Water. Today I'll be providing you a presentation on uh, the River Murray water resource situation and the allocation outlook. Since the last presentation provided in April this year, we've certainly seen a substantial improvement to the rainfall conditions and the inflows and that has benefits to South Australia in terms of an improved water allocation outlook for the 2021 water year. So we're providing a presentation today that has a number of slides in there which I hope will provide informative information to everyone to enable more informed decisions to be made uh, this year. So please have a look at the presentation. Thank you. In terms of what we'd like to cover today, uh, there will be a number of slides looking at the River Murray system inflow and the storages and we'll explain some of the changes that we have seen with the inflows and the storages as a result of recent rainfall and inflows. We'll talk about the current water resource position and climate outlook. Uh, the climate outlook is certainly strengthening, so there's some very positive uh, news there going forward. And we'll talk about the water allocation information and key points, which is really important for uh, people to note, in particular for business decisions they'll be making for the 2020-21 water year. So with the River Murray system uh, inflows, this graph is showing you the uh, inflows that we're currently observing. So for the 2019-20 water year, there's a blue line uh, which has red triangles. So we started off early in the 2019-20 water year with inflows that weren't too bad. Uh, they were tracking uh, quite well. Then by the time it came to August, you can see the inflows really started to reduce. Uh, to the levels observed at the same time uh, last year, which is presented in the Movi purple coloured uh, line. We got to March, we saw an improvement with the rainfall conditions uh, and the inflows, and then in April we've seen a trend back up towards long-term average uh, inflows, which is represented in the dashed uh, black line. So the really good news and positive news there is the climate conditions have certainly shifted in the last couple of months from what was previously a fairly dry inflow type scenario and now we're getting inflows more aligned to the long term average so it's very positive news there that we've started to see that uh, improvement. Uh, there was a substantial rainfall event towards the end of April and what we'll see is quite reasonable inflows uh, coming into the River Murray system for May and our expectation at this point in time is that those inflows will be well above uh, the long-term average. Uh, the long-term average uh, inflow for May is around 430 uh, gigalitres and we're expecting potentially 200 gigalitres at least above that uh, long-term average inflow. So very positive uh, news there with the improved inflows we're seeing. In relation to the Murray-Darling Basin active uh, storages, so this graph is showing you the active storage in the black line uh, from June 2000 until the current point in time in June 2020. So you can see that certainly the storage uh, volumes do change a fair bit uh, over time. Uh, we've seen the depths of the millennium drought starting from about 2002 up until 2010 where for a number of years the storages were well below uh, the long-term active average storage in the blue line. We came to 2011, we had a substantial change to rainfall and inflow patterns and then we had the storages uh, being above average for a number of years. We came to 2015, uh, we saw reduced rainfall in 2015, we saw a depletion of the storage volumes and then 2016 came along. In 2016 there was well above uh, average inflows occurring, well above average rainfall, so that resulted in the storages filling again and a number of the storages spilling. But since 2016-17 we've seen a gradual reduction to the storage volumes as a result of dry conditions now for uh, three years. Positive news is that trend has turned around, we're starting to now see an increase uh, in storage uh, volume. So again, it's really good news that we've seen that dry trend now breaking we're seeing key areas across the Upper Murray catchment uh, being primed for uh, runoff uh, due to above average rainfall. So if we see this trend of reasonable rainfall events continuing now, we should start seeing the storage volume uh, rapidly increasing. And this is the first time that we've had 
uh, catchment conditions that we're experiencing at the moment since 2016. So really positive news in that catchments are wetting up quite significantly and we're seeing very improved inflows. Now the storage volumes at the moment, um, so the long term average storage for the end of May is roughly 50% at the 11th of May 2020, we're around 30%. So still 20% below uh, the long-term average uh, for this uh, time of the year, but we are expecting further improvements into the storages. Uh, the good news again is that we're seeing the storages going up in the right direction, improving in terms of the storage volume rather than declining in terms of uh, the storage volume. So we're still a couple of hundred gigalitres lower uh, than what we had at the same time last year, but uh, by the time we get to the end of May with the inflows that we're still seeing in storage at the moment, we should see some quite healthy improvements uh, to the storages. One thing to consider is that uh, there have been improved inflows into Menindee Lakes in the northern part of the Murray-Darling uh, Basin under, under the rules contained in the Murray-Darling Basin Agreement. If the storage volume gets over 640 gigalitres in Menindee Lakes, that would then trigger an additional share of water to be provided to South Australia based on the latest inflow estimates from Water New South Wales. Uh, it's unlikely that that trigger level of 640 gigalitres will be met unless there's further inflows. In terms of the rainfall outlook, so when we provided this presentation uh, back in April uh, this year, uh, the Bureau of Meteorology was certainly indicating you know, quite a positive sign towards uh, improved rainfall conditions and now this outlook has certainly strengthened in the last month. So what we're seeing over large swathes of the Murray-Darling Basin now is significant chances of exceeding the median rainfall and we're talking in the range of 65 up to about 80% chance of exceeding the median rainfall for that June to August period. Now typically the June to August period is when we start to get our higher inflows uh, coming in. So. It is really important to obviously see these, this rainfall occurring to really push the storages in terms of greater inflows coming into those storages. So that rainfall outlook combined with um, some of the other climate information uh, like around the, um, the El Nino Southern Oscillation uh, Index and the Indian Ocean Dipole, they're both um, currently uh, neutral at the moment but the, all models surveyed are suggesting a possibility of a negative Indian Ocean dipole uh, developing, which based on previous observations, that brings improved uh, rainfall for the Southern Hemisphere uh, winter. So that outlook combined uh, with the rainfall outlook is showing quite positive conditions moving forward. And the good news there again is that we have really wet catchments at the moment. So if we do get that sort of a rainfall outlook actually occurring, we should see some quite healthy uh, improvements to the inflows. So we thought it'd be useful looking back at what the median rainfall is for that uh, forecast period between June to August. So uh, the Bureau have provided a number of graphics available on their website around what the median rainfall uh, looks like. And now this is based on a period between 1990 until uh, 2012. But importantly, what it is showing us is there's a lot of purple that you can see on the graphic there. So that purple aligns to where the current wet catchments are and where we're getting some quite good improved inflows from. So that graphic is indicating that based on that uh, period uh, that inflow, sorry, that rainfall could be in the range of anywhere between 400 up to about 800 millimetres. So if we see that sort of rainfall occurring over wet catchments, again, uh, we'll be looking at some quite improved inflows compared to what we've seen over the last three years. Now it's also important to look at past outlook accuracy. So the graphic over on the right hand side of this slide, this shows you the chance of exceeding median rainfall for that same period. So when we look at the accuracy up on the right hand side of that graphic, again over that key catchment area, showing roughly around a 55 up to about a 75% accuracy rating. So the good news there is, you know, it's tending towards a higher accuracy rating. So again, we're looking at potential for improved uh, rainfall and subsequent inflows. Now in terms of how water is shared under the current Murray-Darling Basin Agreement rules, so South Australia we receive a share of what we call is the shared inflows. Now the shared inflows occur into uh, Dartmouth Reservoir, 
Hume Reservoir, which also includes contributions from the Snowy Hydro Scheme, the Kiwa River, located in northeast Victoria, and also into Lake Victoria and Menindee Lakes when Menindee Lakes are under the Murray-Darling Basin Authority direction, which is above 640 uh, gigalitres, which I mentioned earlier is not likely at this point in time. Now in the majority of months, particularly in dry uh, periods, both New South Wales and Victoria own their own tributary inflows. So on this slide, anything coloured in green or the purple uh, coloured locations is owned by the respective states. However, given the wet conditions that we have seen at the moment, there's a clause under the Murray-Darling Basin Agreement triggered called uh, Special Accounting. So we've had a cessation of the Special Accounting uh, trigger with Victoria. So what this means for South Australia is that we receive a one-third share of the Victorian tributary uh, inflows at the moment. So anything coming in from rivers like the Goulburn River or the Ovens River, South Australia receives a one-third benefit. So this is something that we haven't had in place now for a number of years. We saw this coming into place back in 2016-17. Uh, this has the capacity to significantly improve South Australia's uh, water shares. So we're seeing quite high inflows from the Ovens and Goulburn Rivers at the moment. We've got really wet catchments in the Ovens and Goulburn River uh, catchments. So good news there is we get this additional share over and above what we described that we were getting back in April this year. So in terms of uh, key information about the water allocation process and some of the key points that we'd like you to note, uh, in South Australia we do adopt a conservative water allocation uh, position. This is based on the worst case scenario. So the worst case scenario is an extremely conservative outlook. It's based on inflows that are less than what were observed during the millennium drought. So that's a really important point for people to note, is that even during the millennium drought, we still had improvements. So yeah, we started off in some of those years with 2% allocation and we went up throughout the year. So there was still rainfall and improvements during the millennium drought. So the process around having a conservative worst case scenario built in is to ensure that at no stage do we go backwards in terms of our announced allocation. So we've certainly taken on the feedback uh, from the irrigation sector um, in relation to never wanting to go backwards, hence the reason why we've adopted that worst case scenario. Now, inflows are certainly above uh, the worst case scenario. At the moment, we're seeing them more aligned to average to above average inflows. So that is showing us that, again, that worst case scenario is extremely conservative. We have this wetting trend now, which is positively affecting uh, the stream flows, and we're seeing the highest base flows than what we've observed in the past three years. And as I explained earlier, uh, we're seeing catchment conditions um, that haven't been experienced since 2016. So really positive news there, and the outlook is certainly a lot more positive compared to where we were looking about six months ago. So given the improved inflows and prime catchments combined with that favourable rainfall outlook provided by the Bureau of Meteorology, there's a very high chance of South Australia receiving some quite significant improvements in water availability over the coming months. It's important for people to note that the main inflow period into the River Murray system is typically in that June to November uh, period, which is equivalent to about 80% of the annual inflows occurring uh, during that time. So. For everyone watching how the rainfall and inflow patterns are occurring, look at what is happening during this time and that will give you quite a strong indication about how the season is likely uh, to pan out. Certainly that information around when we expect to see improved inflows occurring is reflected in the published projections for improvements in water availability, uh, which at this time currently suggest a 95% chance that allocations will increase to around 60% and a 75% chance that irrigation allocations will increase to at least 90% by the end of the water year. Now this position is based on uh, the end of April water resources assessment position. It doesn't include uh, all of the rainfall and inflows which are to occur for the May period and also the June uh, period as well. So again, it's a really conservative um, outlook and again, given the current status of wet catchments, improved inflows, these numbers will change going forward and are highly likely to improve 
as we get additional inflows into the River Murray system. So again, it's a very conservative outlook at this point in time. So in terms of when people are thinking about the water availability uh, projections for next year, we certainly strongly encourage uh, anyone that's interested in uh, how water allocation improvements may occur um, over time. So we'll provide in the water allocation statement a range of other uh, scenarios that will show the projected allocation improvements on a month by month basis. So rather than just focusing solely on the worst case, which gives you an absolute guaranteed minimum, we're certainly strongly encouraging people to look at the other scenarios and what we'll do is we'll plot up how the actual improvements are tracking against those uh, alloc different allocation scenarios so then people can see what trend line we're following in terms of a potential allocation scenario uh, to follow. It's also important to remind people that at 850 gigalitres allocations improve above 2%. So our current water resource position at this point in time is around 900 uh, gigalitres and that will improve over uh, the coming months. And just reminding people at 1,496 gigalitres we have an equivalent to 100% for our higher security allocations in South Australia. So just again reminding people when we get improvements over and above 850 gigalitres that allows us to increase over 2% uh, allocation and at 1,496 gigalitres that's equivalent to 100% allocation. I've also included information uh, provided by the state as to where people can go and access information on, on the water allocation announcements and determinations uh, interstate. So I've got the websites listed there for South Australia, New South Wales, Victoria and also the Murray-Darling Basin Authority which has quite a good comprehensive uh, package of information in relation to how water is shared along the River Murray system and between the jurisdictions. Thank you for your time today and I hope you've found the information provided in the presentation useful. If you do have any other questions, concerns or comments, I encourage you to get in contact with the department and we'll try to assist you where we can. Thanks again.